A few months ago, I purchased my home, a 2016 Ram Promaster. My dog, Akila and I will be living in it full time. First, it needed a really thorough wash down. And then I got to work doing a scary thing, which is cutting holes in my van. I started with two Max Air fans, then I installed two windows. Then I built and insulated my subfloor. Once that was done, I moved on to the insulation of my entire van, which I used 3M Thinsulate. Then I did the pre-wiring for my van, which I messed up a bunch, but it, it's all good now. After that, I built what I like to call my garage, and I used this really awesome stain. I love my garage. Then it was time to lay the floor. I ended up going with a dark walnut floor to match what I hope to be dark walnut walls. The most recent thing has been my bed frame, which I absolutely love. Now that all the foundation is done, I can really get to the fun stuff. Make sure to like and follow to stay up to date. Tell me that you're extremely wealthy without telling me that you're extremely wealthy. <coughs> well, I don't like to brag, but since you asked. This is my office. That is my throne. This hammock is my living room. The forest is my home. The kitchen set up over there, and that's my little light. Once the sun has had its fun, I sleep in here at night. My handcrafted wooden library has books to pass the time. And this is my surround sound. It's quality sublime. It's not the biggest house on earth, but it gets me by just fine. If you've got health, then you've got wealth. I love this life of mine. Hey, it's James and Deanna, and this is part two of Battle of the Vans. In part one, we built out the shower bases for both of our vans, and this is the terrazzo tile I picked for my shower. I'm using a super strong and waterproof adhesive to adhere it to the waterproof shower wall, and after making all the custom cuts, I'm grouting with silicone so it can bend and move without cracking. We made a bar for the storage area so that everything stays in place, and look how good it's looking! And now the tile for James's van. Should he do layout one or two? Like and follow for part three. Here's a soup. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. The world, <clears throat> the government, has convinced you that you need to work a nine to five to live, and that's simply not true. Welcome to my page. I live in a van and I work on the road. And lots of people assume that I don't work and that I just have money appear out of nowhere. But here's how I do make money. First, I am a photographer. I have been a photographer for three years and I just book shoots on the road. Basically, someone books a shoot with me, I drive to them, do the shoot, they pay me, I send them the pictures, and we're all good. Second, I make money from the creator fund and brand deals. So the creator fund is like a little bit of extra pocket money and then brand deals usually pay decently well. Third, I work a seasonal job. So in the summer, I work for like two and a half months and I save all that money to put into savings so I can travel the next year. This lifestyle is also super cheap. My rent is my car payment, which is $200 a month. The only other things I have to pay are gas, food, and insurance. And I eat stuff like bread, cream, cheese, and jam for breakfast. So worth it. So people always ask me if I'm afraid to be completely alone in the middle of nowhere in places just like this. And the truth is no, because I know I've taken so many precautions to be as safe as possible here are just a few. Having a pocket door here that locks instead of a curtain. So if someone were to break into the front, I can call 911, jump out the back, figure out a game plan. I keep various weapons around here that I do not show publicly because that is my business. But please know I'm well protected. Ferocious beasts. Don't let the cute faces fool you. They do alert me before I would ever hear a thing and they are good little warnings. Only park in places that I know are safe by reading previous campers reviews. Only share very general locations. Do not tell people where you are publicly. In over two years, nothing has ever happened. Not that it couldn't, but I stay aware of my surroundings. I'm always prepared. And at some point I have to live my life. I refuse to be scared because I am a woman when that is my strength. After all, not my weakness. Five reasons why I bought a school bus and decided to convert that instead of going with a van. Number one, it's cheaper for the amount of space that I'm getting. So I paid $3,500 for my school bus. It was retired from a school. They auctioned it off and I got it for really cheap and there's a lot of space in it. Number two is I love how much natural light comes in. There's windows literally all around it, which I personally love in all the vans that were within my price range. They either had one window or no windows. And honestly, it was just kind of depressing to me. Number three, which is a weird reason, is because my bus is painted white at the moment and it's a bus, it looks like a prison bus. And so people don't really bother me because they think it's a prison bus. Number four is obviously the bus was built for children, so it was built to last and it's very durable and I have hardly any problems with it.
And number five, at the current state in life, I feel like it just fits me best. Hey, it's part two of our quarantine van build where we're putting a full-size shower in our van. You might be wondering how we can use tile and something that moves so much, and the answer is silicone-based glue that we're using right here. It allows it to bend and move without cracking, it's super, super strong, and it's completely waterproof. We used fiberglass panels on the sides and ceiling, and we used a composite tile in the pop-out on a slight slope so it doesn't collect water. We let each section dry before doing the next, and these spacers were a lifesaver to keep everything so straight. Ah, I love it so far, but we still need to grout. So I'm using this silicone grout that makes it even stronger, bendable, and waterproof. Then finally, we added the handle and shower head, and oh my goodness, I'm in love. We ordered a self-cleaning retractable door that will go right here. And I am so excited to build the cabinets because this is the cane webbing for the cabinet doors here. So like and follow for part three. I always get asked how I shower while living in a van, so here you go. I have this. It's called a solar shower. You fill it up with water. And hope that the water doesn't go all over the place like this. Then once it's full, you put it in a sunny place to warm up. And the shower hose works like any other shower hose, so yeah. And as you can see, I'm not really worried about anyone seeing me because I'm in the middle of nowhere. I live in that old bus. That's my girlfriend. We redid the whole outside as well as the whole inside. What? What is life right now? I didn't even know this existed. Here's a quick visual for you. Quiet on the bridge. so confused how this all of a sudden turns into a tunnel. Well, see they built this island in the rock and then there's a tunnel that is it's a short tunnel. They made a, a freaking tunnel. island. Look how cool it looks on the map. Why easier for bigger tanker ships to go over this than to try and go through the bridge. Woo! Under the sea. Under the sea. The end of it here. There's not one, but two tunnel entries. Okay. Our must-have items for living in a van part three. This entry rug helps us to prevent tracking dirt and debris into the van. We have covers for each of our windows that help us maintain privacy and also regulate the temperature inside the van. Ours are really cheap and we made them ourselves using reflectix, duct tape, and magnets. We have a container mounted underneath the van that carries our gray water sewer hose. Having a hose makes it clean and easy to dump our gray water. And having an external container means we don't have to carry the hose inside the van. We have a signal booster that allows us to have better service in remote areas. And these string lights I got from Amazon. Yes, the boys do stay in the van when I'm at work. They have ventilation number one. Vent number two. Cross breeze for the side window. The boys have their iPhone that connects to the um, Bluetooth speaker and the projector in case I want to pull down the projector and they can watch Netflix. This is a temperature monitoring system. It comes with an app, so it lets me know how hot it is and how humid it is inside of the van at all times. Not only that, it notifies me when I'm within five degrees of my maximum set perimeters in the app. This is my front and rear view camera. It allows me to see what's going on inside and outside of the van at all times, and I can live stream to check on the boys. The boys and I go for a run in the morning. I go to work. On my lunch break, I come out and they actually have a trail right behind the hospital where I take the boys to go potty on my lunch break and things like that. Anytime I leave the hospital in my scrubs or something like that, I go back in, change my clothes, wash my hands, do all that stuff and right back into work. The boys are on autopilot. I'm sorry, this has to be addressed. How, how did this become this, become this, become this? Today I'm going to show you guys how we get internet in our van. Since Nate and I both work from our computers and love to watch Netflix at night, it's important that we have a reliable connection while we're on the road. We have an unlimited data plan through T-Mobile which allows us to connect to a hotspot via our phones. We also have a powerful signal booster that gives us more stable connection in remote areas.